Y'all believe in karma? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. You guys are earning good karma points to be here right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Y'all know that every time y'all go to a local comedian comedy taping, you're earning good karma points for the afterlife. That way, after you die, <laughs> you won't reincarnate and become an Asian male stand-up comedian. All right, you guys, yeah. I'm so excited. He's we have great real. show. Let's give it up once again for all the performers you saw, all the soft shows, Dr. Joffrey. Oh yeah, phones on silent. If you guys need your phones on silent, put your Cheeto bags on silent, please. <laughs> no problem. Finish your snacks, and uh, uh, I think we should get the show started now. I think you know why you're here, but uh, and I know you all know this guy is not only one of my favorite comedians; he's a very good friend of mine. He's also a great friend of the community. He supports comedians and artists. Oliver Austin has always been such a beacon for creativity, which is why it gives me, uh, I'm, I really feel honored to be here to introduce this person. I know you all know him. Please give a love and loving and warm welcome to the host of this show tonight. Total real love, Todd and everyone, let it hear. Pop my trunk, like yup, yup, yup. I'm the man when you see me say, sup, sup, sup. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's very awesome. It's a big moment for me. You know, it's a big milestone in the stand up comedian career when they record their second album in their own home instead of the comedy club. In the industry, we have a term for that. It's called, bitch, you ain't famous yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're wondering why I'm dressed like this, I dress to match the venue I'm performing at. <laughs> so yeah, I'm dressed up as a homeowner. <laughs> oh yeah, I came to America when I was five years old. You know, now I feel it's very confusing. I have no idea what was going on. So I will watch on our Chris Rock comedy specials. And Chris Rock taught me everything I needed to know about America. <laughs> Chris Rock taught me about politics. He taught me about finance. He taught me about women. He taught me about the racial tension between the blacks and the whites and how do I absolutely ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> Because I'm Asian American, if you look up Asian American in Wikipedia, it'll tell you the next best thing to being white in America. <laughs> you get to enjoy all the white privileges and feel none of the guilt come February. <laughs> But to be honest, I live here for like 29 years now, and I've been influenced by so many different cultures that I don't even feel Asian anymore. My favorite food right now is curly fries. <laughs> I say fuck the popo, even though they've been nothing but cordial with me. <laughs> Not to brag, okay? But the last time a cop pulled me over, here's what happened. The cop went, Son, do you know why I'm pulling you over? Of course, officer. I'm doing 70 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour speed limit zone, duh. <laughs> then, then why, why are you speeding? Officer, the new Samsung Galaxy S20 just came out. <laughs> And you know me, I just gotta have it, dog. <laughs> you, you Asians, y'all so good with technology. Now go on ahead, son. Go save our economy. <laughs> now, did I really went 
and bought a new Samsung Galaxy S20? Nope, I went and bought drugs. <laughs> I came here when I was five to America with my whole family. And uh, when I first came here as a kid, my mom, she saw one of those Got Milk commercials, and she fell for the propaganda. <laughs> So, from elementary all the way to my sophomore year of high school, she would make me drink three tall glasses of milk a day. One for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. And guess what? I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> my childhood was very torturous. Okay? You hear not toilet flushes in our house. <laughs> Plus, science has proven that milk doesn't make you grow tall. <laughs> Being tall is 50% genetics and 50% hanging around shorter people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hang around any uh, tall people. I mean, tall women are cool, but tall guys, they can burn in hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate tall guys. Yeah, every one I met of them a jerk, an asshole. Except the one here tonight at a comedy <laughs> recording. Those guys are nice. <laughs> Yeah, here's an example of a tall guy being evil, okay? So, recently I met one of my comedian friends who moved out to LA to pursue his dream of becoming a big actor. So, I saw him at a party recently, right? So, I came up to him to give him a hug. He hugged me, he picked me up. And then he went like this, and then he just stood me back down. And yeah, um, I never felt so emasculated before. <laughs> like, I'm a 34-year-old man that couldn't defend his stationary rights. <laughs> know how embarrassing that is? To get picked up like that? That easily? Yeah. Um, quick public service announcement. The only time when it's permissible to pick me up like that in public is when I'm in a six-foot swimming pool. Pick me up, move me to the five-foot section, and then I can tiptoe my way back to shore. Y'all believe in karma? So the same tall guy friend that picked me up like that, that violated me in public, yeah. Um, bad karma happened to him, because he was driving home from uh, Halloween this year, right? He was driving home from downtown, and he got into a car accident. And he was driving sober too. What a waste of car accident, right? <laughs> And this car accident was so horrific that the doctor had to amputate both of his legs. Yeah, and that made me feel very terrible inside because he's still taller than me. Yeah. He still talks shit about short people. Like the last time I hung out with him, right? This is what he told me. He told me, Ty, when you're having sex with a woman and you're hitting it doggy style, if her back is all straight against you at a 90 degree angle the whole time, it means you have a small penis. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just out here preventing scoliosis. <laughs> I'm a true friend with benefits. Other guys ruin your life by stretching it out. <laughs> so.
So my parents, they want me to have intercourse. Uh, no, uh, they want me to come in somebody, okay? Yeah. They want me to get somebody pregnant. Like, they encourage me to. Yeah. Because they're old and they want to have grandkids. And it's so embarrassing every time I see them now. Every time I see my mom, she'll be like, Ty, have you been busting nuts and snuts like we discussed? <laughs> and I have to tell her, Mom, could you please tone down your language? We're in church right now. <laughs> Let me pray to the Vietnamese Jesus to make this happen. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, please help me find a woman that satisfy my mom. And if she happened to be a Gemini, then please help me turn this hole into a housewife. I know you can do it, Jesus. It'll be just like turning wine back into water. <laughs> but to be honest, I don't want to like, have kids yet until I become a successful stand-up comedian. Because once you have kids, you pass on your DNA to your kids. And I don't want my kids to have open my comedian DNA. <laughs> yeah. He or she will be prone to dropping out of college and performing at comedy club with a mortgage. <laughs> the only thing my parents don't want me to do um, is have sex with somebody on alcohol because they'll think that make the baby dumb. But let's be honest here, a lot of us will conceive on alcohol, all right? It's just that our parents don't want to admit it. Because awkward, what are you going to tell your kid? Hey son, I have something to tell you. You were sponsored by Crown Royal. <laughs> But to be honest, um, I'm way too depressed to uh, have kids. Yeah. So anybody here experienced depression before? Yeah? Anybody here has, right? How do y'all cope with depression? Going to a house comedy show? Yeah? Yeah? Alright. What? You said masturbation? Oh, jeez. Why you have to sit in the front row? <laughs> you see, if you sit in the back of the couch, you can masturbate. Nobody will see. <laughs> this guy comes by comedy tape to masturbate. <laughs> oh, what a jerk. Different stroke for different folks, right? <laughs> what you get off to punchline? <laughs> you love a good delivery, don't you? <laughs> Damn, I bet you this guy fucked to the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> So when I get depressed, you know, about my current situation, um, I like to take a walk in the park to clear my negative thoughts. And one day, I was just walking in the park, you know, and there was this little girl, she was like about this tall. She couldn't be any older than like four years old. She was walking with her dad, and when she saw me, she pointed at me and then she went, no, Dad, it's a Mongolian that tried to attack Mulan. 
And I couldn't even hate on her because with this haircut, I do love my golden as fuck. <laughs> this is a Pilnish Your Pilnish haircut. <laughs> No good guys in any film have this haircut. <laughs> but she made me curious about uh, Mongolia though. So I actually went home and I did some research on Mongolia. And I found out that Mongolia is the Texas of Asia. <laughs> yeah, it's 100% true. Because in Mongolia, they have Mongolian grill. <laughs> and in Texas, we have Texas barbecue. So I bet you, when a Mongolian hang out with a Texan, they'll both come to the same conclusion that Oklahoma sucks. <laughs> yeah. So, for that joke, I had to Google top things that Texan hates. <laughs> number one was Oklahoma. Uh, number two is very surprising. Number two is sniffing with the window open. <laughs> yeah, weird, right? And number three is even more weird. Number three is Asian male stand-up comedian. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so they say that, um, y'all remember the time when Asian was getting beat up? Or they say so in the news? Right? Yeah. Yeah, there was a time where they were reporting Asian getting beat up, especially in New York. I always feel safe living in Austin because I know way too many people here watch anime to be racist. <laughs> yeah. The only thing they made a big deal out of was a popular stand-up comedian. He got on stage and he said the word chink with a hard K. <laughs> yeah, people were blowing up my phone talking about it. And, um, you know, I can't speak for all Asians. But me being Vietnamese, I'm okay with American using Asian racial slur because we beat them in the Vietnam War. <laughs> Here's how I see it, okay? If I kick your ass in a fight, you can call me Chang, Goo, Dog Eater, Nanad I, Asian male stand up comedian. <laughs> Whatever the heck you want, your uncle is still homeless holding up a sign that says, I was in Nam. <laughs> and guess what? He fought for your right to use the word chink. So use it productively. Use it when you're having sex with me. Because I'm a Pearl Harbor that Punani. <laughs> um, speaking of unexpected droppings, anybody here been to the strip club? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, you guys work at a strip club. Oh yeah. It's a great place to work at. Probably better than the restaurant I work at. <laughs> yeah? You don't have to bring people hot coffee and they complain that it's cold. <laughs> I mean, when you sit your ass on people nap, do they complain that it's cold? <laughs> I was just making a joke, wow. 
I mean, the balls of a guy that have the audacity to tell a stripper that her ass is too cold. <laughs> That's crazy. So what did they tell you? Can you microwave this? <laughs> You're gonna like one moment, I'll be right back. <laughs> Let me use the uh, the hand drying machine. <laughs> so I only been to the strip club twice in my life. The first time I went is so embarrassing. Yeah. I right, answer me this, okay? Since y'all work at the strip club. Um, if you're a guy, are you supposed to have boner in the strip club? Because I didn't see any sign anywhere in any strip club that said that you should have a boner or is it okay? It's fine as long as it's not like, just don't lay it out. Oh, okay. As long as it's not like super visual, visible. <laughs> Okay, so you could have it like standing up, like you're pitching a tent, but it just, you can't come out of the tent. If that's fine, if I have a big dick, I was going to a strip club to show off my dick. Like, look how big this tent is, it's a teepee. <laughs> Wear gray sweatpants every day <laughs> to the strip club. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, you heard it. It's okay to have bone at the strip club, y'all. You don't have to hide it. There's no shame in your game. Yeah, God bless America. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so the first time I went to the strip club, um, my friend ordered me a $5 lap dance. <laughs> and I didn't expect the lap dance to be so powerful. <laughs> I thought it would just be playful, you know? I didn't know there'd be so much pressure <laughs> applied. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what she was trying to do, but she was just grinding on me like really, really, really hard. I'm like, oh shit, it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, you're heading toward a cliff and you can't break. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I just did the most natural thing was it for me to do. Yeah, I just let it go. I just let it all go. It's kind of like peeing in your pants in a dream. You know, it, it, once like that pee hit like the side of your leg, you wake up and you realize you're peeing in your pants, but it's too late to stop it. You can't run to the bathroom. Yeah, so that's what happened. I just wetted myself. But... I didn't act obvious, you know, I didn't go like, yeah. you know, I just played cool, I didn't make any single movement. I was like James Bond, level up, coming, right? Now, the only thing I think I did was I rolled my eyes back, which most guys do, or I think AV guys do when they come in their pants, no matter the ethnicity. Even Ray Charles wore his eyes. <laughs> but after I came in my pants, the stripper, she was so smooth about it. Yeah, she put her hand on my chest and she went, Ooh, daddy, that's supposed to happen because you're such a man. <laughs> And I try and play it off. I try and be cool. I told her, well, only came quick because I got somewhere I got to be. <laughs> Let's not waste any time here. 
Time is money. And cum is free. So the second time I went to a strip club is because my homie, he just got offered a job as a DJ at the strip club. And he was very nervous about it, so he wanted me to go and support him. And I was just like, dude, you don't do shit. All you do is take song requests and you just shout out like DJ Canny or whatever. Right? <laughs> but he was so nervous that he kind of like begged me to go to the strip club. He said that if I go, he'll hook me up with a table free bottle service, and I can have, if I ever get a nap dance, let him know, and he'll play the longest song ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was his deal. And that song is, uh, it's Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> yeah. They have three guitar solo. <laughs> so, uh, I decided, you know, to go to the strip club since he had all this hookup and stuff. And I went, and then I sat at a table just drinking alcohol by myself. And then there was this very, very, like, fine stripper. Like, her skin was kind of, like, golden. She had, like, black hair. Uh, she looked very, uh, Egyptian, but I didn't thought she was Egyptian. I thought she was Indian because Egyptian are kind of rare, you know, you don't see them very much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she came up to me and then uh, she went, uh, Ooh, daddy, I really love your eyes. You have them sexy shark eyes. <laughs> and being somebody that got made fun of for having small eyes my whole childhood, I thought, wow, this lady is my soulmate. She's able to see through the thin slit of my eyes. And into my soul, you know? She's really trying to see who I am. Yeah. And then she rubbed her hand across my hair and she said, ooh, daddy, you have very sexy hair. <laughs> You look like Joe Dirt that watch anime. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, I do watch anime, so, so she knows me. <laughs> and then she went, ooh, daddy, do you want to go inside the VIP? And I was like, yeah, I'm big daddy shark. I'll go inside the VIP. <laughs> Let's go! And, and then she went, but it cost seven hundred dollars. And I was like, babe, what's inside of VIP that's worth seven hundred dollars? She went, more privacy. And I was like, we don't need more privacy. Everybody here has seen a blowjob before. <laughs> I mean, for 700, you expect blowjob activity, right? <laughs> I'm not being a jerk here, right? Or <laughs> due to inflation, the price of BJ went up. <laughs> but yeah, um, after I told her that, she just snapped in like really hard across the face, yeah? <laughs> so turn out, for $700, I wouldn't get a blowjob in a VIP. Her deal was, for $700, I get to go down on her for an unlimited amount of time. <laughs> you all think that's a good deal? <laughs> yeah. On the fence about it? <laughs> well, forget what you all think because I took that deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be mad because I'm a host at a restaurant and I have Hosting money to throw around. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. So uh, we went inside the VIP, and I just started eating her out as advertised. Yeah. And I just went down on her for like such a long time that I couldn't even like feel anything anymore. Like my taste bud is gone. So I was like, damn, did I just caught COVID-69? <laughs> But I still kept eating her out. Cause I gotta get my money worth, you know? Yeah. I was eating her out for such a long time that when I have my hand, you know, between her leg, eating her out, I just like have a drink in my mouth. Then I, I put it out and the waiter will come and refill the drink. Yeah. I must have had like four refill. Until the waiter tapped me and then I have to talk to him and then he went like this, I guess my breath. My breath stinks or something. You know, he's went like this. I have no idea why, because I didn't taste anything. So he tapped me and then he told me, hey, you need to wrap this up, because we're about to post in 10 minutes. It's like 5 in the morning or whatever. Then it was 5 in the morning. So I told the strip, I told her, hey, you remember our deal, right? And then she said, yeah, we can take it to your car. So I took her inside my car, and you guys are not going to believe this, but she's still in my car right now. Yeah. She's in there, in my back seat, in the driveway. I just told her, hold on, I have to record a comedy album really quick. Now go back to eating her. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, um, any of y'all been to Chicago? Yeah? Yeah. I went to uh, Chicago and I went and saw a, a jazz concert. After the concert, it was so great that I want to smoke some weed. But I didn't know anybody in Chicago with weed, so I just thought, oh man, this sucks. I'm just gonna sit down in this bus bench and just chill. And then I sat down at the bus bench, and then suddenly two African American gentlemen came up to me and they were like, hey, could we sit here on the bench with you? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. So they sat down, we started talking, and then they were like, hey, do you smoke weed? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> so they pour a blunt, and they roll up some weed, and we both smoke it, and I got really high. Um, yeah, so we got really high, and uh, before they nap, they warned me, they told me, Ty, you're a cool guy, and I know that you are here to do comedy, but Smoking blunt from a stranger is the number one way you get robbed in Chicago. And uh, I just, you know, played off. I was kind of nervous. I just said, I said, well, thank you guys for not taking advantage of me. And then they went, well, we, we was going to rob you, but we don't want to get in trouble with the LGBTQ community. <laughs> I was outraged. I was about to say, well, I ain't none of those alphabets. But I didn't want to get robbed. So what came out instead was, hey, you guys are really nice gentlemen. If we met under better circumstances, I'll suck your dicks. <laughs> and that is how I got robbed in Chicago. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of my uh, my recording. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I did 57 minutes, but the only thing I missed was my Crip Keeper Dick joke. I totally forgot that joke. That's my biggest joke. No, I'm gonna say on the second show. Yeah, it's today now. <laughs> Way too late in the game. I was supposed to say it after uh, 
My hair make the crib keeper. I was supposed to say my friend give me advice to wear a hat. Yup, 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 I'm the man when you see me say sup, sup, sup I'm a star when you see me look up, up, up I'm no Taurus, Nike, Biggie, no pup, pup, pup Pop my trunk, Nike, yup, yup, yup I'm the man when you see me say sup, sup, sup I'm a star when you see me look up, up, up I'm no Taurus, Nike, Biggie, no pup, pup, pup